Hi everybody, welcome to our vodcast on natural selection. So what we're going to do in this vodcast is talk about how nature selects certain traits that allow organisms to survive and then how those traits over millions of years create brand new different species. So our example in this vodcast is going to be modern day whales because they're large deep sea aquatic organisms that have ancestry that stretches all the way back to these creatures, the mesonychids, which are four-legged land animals. So looking at a whale today, you wouldn't know or realize that its original ancestors were actually terrestrial land animals. In this vodcast, we'll refer to this evogram, and that's going to show us the progression of change over time as we look at several different characteristics that allow these organisms to transition from land into deep sea organisms. And the first characteristic I'd like to go over is the legs. If you take a look at the legs, Pachycetus, the early, one of the earliest whales, um, has four legs attached to it. And then as we see over time in the new different versions of whales that show up throughout the millions of years of evolution, we see that the legs change because their job or their function changes. So in Ambulocetus, we see the legs get shorter and then the hind feet get webbed. And in Cuchocetus, we see the legs get even shorter, and they're still webbed too. Rhodocetus, the legs are a little bit bigger than Cuchocetus, but still shorter than Pachycetus's. So, again, we still see that webbing. And it's not until Doryudon do we notice that those legs no longer look like legs anymore. The front limbs have turned into flippers, and we see that the hind legs have practically diminished to nothing. And as we get to modern-day whales, odontocetes, the tooth whales, and the mystocetes, the baleen whales, we see no physical evidence of any limbs or legs. So let's talk about why. When you're living on land, you need legs to support yourself off the ground. So you have to support your body weight so you can move around. So Mesonychid was strictly a terrestrial organism, which eventually started to spend a little bit more time near the water where it can find food or more food and have less competition for it. As over millions of years of time and through various mutations, Pachycetus showed up on Earth. And when we take a look at Pachycetus, okay, again, one of the early whales, we notice that this Pachycetus has long legs too because it spent more time on land than it did in the water. So again, you need those strong legs in order to support your body weight. However, when we get to Ambulocetus, the walking whale that swims, okay, the Ambulocetus legs, as we can tell, are much shorter. And in addition to that, the feet or the hands are now webbed. So that webbing is obviously beneficial for swimming as it makes it a better swimmer. The long legs have now shortened up because if you're spending more time in the water, you don't need a lot of leg strength to support you. Now, Ambulocetus can come out of the water, but it's pretty clumsy, like as if you were looking at an alligator or a crocodile walking on land. Then as we get to Doryudon, we notice that the front legs have now turned into flippers, and then the back legs are just these little nubs at the end here, so there's practically no leg left. And again, if you're living in the water, there's no need for legs to support you. The disappearance of the legs gives something else to these organisms. The legs, as they disappear, are going to help these animals swim faster because if you're swimming through the, the water and your legs are dragging behind you, then that means water's going to hit them, it's going to slow you down, cause more friction, and you're going to be slower in the water. So the disappearance of legs also helped create speed. So there's no use for them for support, and the trade-off was getting more speed in the water. And as we take a look at the humpback whale, we notice that there's no evidence of any out, any hind limbs or legs back there. And we see that the front limbs have turned into flippers. And flippers are important because you need to steer in this aquatic environment. So the front legs turn into flippers for steering. The hind legs go away to make the animal quicker. Now, another characteristic I like to talk about is the tail because some kids tend to ask, well, if the hind legs go away, then how does it swim? Well, when the hind legs disappear, we notice that the tail starts to change too. And as the tail starts to change, that becomes the primary structure for swimming. On land, animals have tails for balance. So again, when you're supported by a body of water, you don't need a tail to balance you out. So we see that this tail probably still doesn't have much of a swimming structure to it function, possibly slightly a little bit. But when we get to Doryudon, we definitely see bigger muscles attaching to the spine and into the tail. So the bigger muscles here are going to make the tail a much more powerful tool for swimming. So again, less reason to have legs because you don't need them for swimming anymore and the legs will slow you down. So we get rid of legs, develop a powerful tail, and now we become faster in the water. And again, here we have even 
bigger musculature going into the tail, causing much more force, much more power, a lot faster speeds in swimming. Also, when we take a look at the hair on these creatures, we notice that hair decreases and then eventually vanishes by the time Doryodon and the modern whales hit. All right, when we take a look at hair, we see Mesonychid is full of it. It lives on land, needs it to trap heat. Pacacita still spent a lot of time on land, so it still needed that hair to maintain heat. However, Ambulocetus, as you can see, practically has none, except for some of these whiskers here on the snout. But when we get to Doryodon, Doryodon has zero hair on it. And then modern whales have like no hair on them as well. And the reason being is this. If you've ever watched swimmers compete or, Olymp or the Olympics and you watch Olympic swimming, you'll notice that they always shave their bodies or they wear a swimsuit. This way it makes their body more streamlined and the hair doesn't get hit with the water because even though hair is very thin and minute, body hair is going to cause some friction with the water, which is going to slow you down. So to become faster in the water, hair disappears over time to increase the speed of these organisms. Another trait to look at is skull shape. When you take a look at the Pacacita skull shape, it's a little bit broad in terms of height, but as we take a look at all the other ones, they get more streamlined and more pointy or narrow. All right, and this is going to help the organism go through the water faster. So if you want to think of fast cars, think about what a Ferrari, the front end of a Ferrari looks like, or the front end of a Lamborghini looks like. Those cars are designed for speed, and those front ends look this way because it allows the air to go right over the car to cut through the air to go super fast. If you wanted to race a Toyota Tundra against a Ferrari, that Tundra is not going to be fast because it's bulkier and it's not designed for speed. So the front end of that Tundra is going to catch a lot of wind and catch a lot of friction and be very slow. So over time, we can see that the skulls start to change and become more streamlined to better fit swimming through the aquatic environment faster. So again, we have another trait that increases speed. Then the last trait I like to go over is the nasal passage. You'll notice that the nasal passage moves from the front of the skull, starts to migrate towards the top of the head until it gets to modern day whales as we see today that have the whale that have their nose or blowholes on top of their heads. So as we can see in this diagram here, Mesonychid has her nose in the front, Pacacetus has her nose in the front, Ambulocetus has their nose in the front, and Doryodon has their nasal passage slightly towards the back of it, towards the top of their head. And then whales today have that on their blowholes on the top of their heads. And the reason being is this, if you're swimming fast after prey because you haven't eaten and you're hungry, the last thing you want to do is pop your head out of the water, take a breath, and then get back under the water and try to find your prey because you might lose sight of it or it's now gotten away because you had to stop. Or on the flip side, if you're trying to evade a predator and not get eaten by a predator, the last thing you want to do is stop, pop your head out of the water, take a breath, and then restart all over again as it's gaining on you. So we notice that a lot of these traits gear towards more speed in the water. And the reason why speed in the water is important is because natural selection chose these traits as good survival traits because if you are fast in the water, you can do two things to survive. One, you can eat food so you can catch food more efficiently and spend less energy doing so. So you're gonna eat and be able to survive. And two, if you're fast, you could evade a lot of predators and that'll obviously help you survive since you're not being eaten by one. And as you survive, these organisms will then reproduce and pass those traits that make them so successful in the water into their offspring. So as these traits become more popular in these, in these other populations of whales, they will change over time subtly because eventually DNA will change and mutate, creating better and better versions of these organisms. So the modern day whales that you see today may look drastically different in a million years. And that's how whales eventually evolved from four-legged land-walking creatures into deep-sea aquatic organisms that we see today.